Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing Adventures. And this is the newest, hottest stove from Fire Maple. And it's the Sunflower Camping Stove and it offers two-in-one solution for both heating and cooking. So let's find out what the hype is all about. So Fire Maple sent the stove to me and wanted my honest review. So we're going to do just that today and test out the stove and I'll let you know the pros and cons of the stove and who is the stove for. So in the box, you'll find this very nice carrying case that zips open. And once you open the case, you'll find the stove. And right off the back and from their advertised pictures, this is a very attractive looking and has an interesting design and never seen a stove like this before. But does the stove perform as good as it looks? Well, as far as the specs go, the main body is made out of stainless steel and the legs are aluminum alloy. And the connectors are made out of copper. And the whole heating element is made out of ceramics, so it radiates the heat. And when it's unfolded, it's 7.1 inches by 6.6 .6 inches by 4.9 inches. And when it's folded, it's 6.5 inches by 4.5 inches by 3.2 inches. So it's not the smallest stove, but it's small enough to take with you. And it weighs 818 grams or just around 1.75 pounds. And the heat output is 61,000 BTU or 1800 kilowatts, which isn't all that strong, especially when you compare it to my Soto Amica stove that I have because that little stove puts out 11,000 BTUs or 3,200 kilowatts in a very compact configuration. But they both have pros and cons, which I'll discuss more about that later. And there are a few different ways to set the stove. So if you unfold the handle with the rubber, you could set it down on the table or on the ground and it's positioned to be used as a heater. And you could also fully fold out the handle and hang the heater so that the heat is thrown horizontally. And if you wanna use it as a stove, you could fold out the outer legs and now you could use it as a stove. And on the bottom, it has this quarter inch thread to screw onto a tripod. And I could think of a few scenarios where this option might come in handy. We'll also test that out later. And some of the warning label states to not to use the stove in an enclosed space such as tent, vehicle, or home, and which is obvious and any gas stove shouldn't be used in an enclosed space. But as long as it's ventilated correctly, I haven't had any issues when using a stove in a tent. And not to use a stove with the empty dry pot or mirror light stainless steel product because it'll cause overheating and damage the stove. And I'm guessing since the stove uses infrared radiation to heat the pot and the shininess of the mirror pot will bounce the heat back to the stove. So I think that's why it states not to use something like that. And to only use butane propane mixture to fuel the stove. So I have isobutane here. But as you all know, isobutane is more costly and it's not as effective as say propane in colder temperatures. And I have this adapter, which I used it with other stove that also states to use isobutane only. And I haven't had any issues with it. And I remember reading a review that someone tried uh, with the propane and it worked just fine. And I also seen pictures of people using butane gas cartridge with the stove. And guess what? I also have the adapter for that. So we're going to carefully try all three types of fuel and test it out. So onto the testing portion. First, let's find out how long it takes to boil two cups of water. And the stove does not have igniter, so you will need an external igniter to start the stove. And I have a stopwatch here, so we're gonna start the time when I put the pot on the, on the stove. But first, let's set it up to the highest. So it took about five minutes to boil two cups of water. And you know what? That's a long time to boil two cups of water. But it was somewhat expected because knowing it only generates 6,100 BTU and we're in a much colder day today, so the weather will play an effect. So this is no way the fastest water boiling champion. But with that said, the stove will be best for cooking with pan or cast iron skillet because I noticed that it distributes the heat evenly when I was boiling water. Unlike the Soto Amica stove that I have, and that was my main complaint using that stove because it might boil the water the quickest, but when I was cooking with the pan, only the center will get really extremely hot 
and burn everything while the outer side of the pan is still cooking. So this stove will be best for cooking a slab of meat or simmering noodles or cooking rice with, which I mostly do. And now let's try heating with the stove. And the heat that it provides is a good adequate amount of heat from a small surface. So you could quickly warm up your hands or your feet, but it doesn't really radiate the heat all around. And it's more of a direct heat, which was expected. But nonetheless, it's a good amount of heat. So while camping, I could place it on the ground and heat my feet or legs, or I could place it on the table and heat up my upper body. And I think this will be great for heating up the tent in the cold mornings to get the edge off. And it's very quiet to run this heater, so I like that a lot. And now let's try connecting the heater to a tripod. So I connect the heater to a camera tripod and I could already tell that this is not the safest way to use this heater because the fuel cartridge will just hang like that as it's only 16 inches long and it'll create pressure point here. But if you get a netting that goes around the legs, you could place the fuel cartridge without uh, bending the hose and this will be a great option for uh, many different scenarios where you're going to be standing around most of the time. Like if you're tailgating or at a game because you could extend the tripod legs and heat yourself standing up instead of sitting down and squatting down. So yeah, this will work great for those scenarios. And lastly, let's try the two different types of fuel. So first, I have the butane connected to the stove and let's hear it if it makes any funny or weird noise or spills the fuel out because if it does, I'm not even gonna light it up and cause damage to the stove and injure myself. So here we go. Okay, it seems okay. Well, the butane seems to be working, and let's try with the propane now. All right, so I have the butane connected, and same thing, let's uh, see if I hear anything or see any fuel spilling out. Here we go. No, sounds normal to me. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, and the propane seems to be working. And it does seem like the propane is giving off the most heat out of all three different types of fuel. Oh yeah, it's, it's a, there's a big difference. So it does seem like all three different types of fuel work with the stove, but I would still use isobutane as it's recommended. But if you decide to use butane or propane, please do it at your own discretion. So who is this stove for? Well, if you're like me and you like the newest, coolest camping gear, this is definitely for you. <laughs> no, but seriously, the stove has a place of its own. And I say that because while it's not the quickest to boil water, but as far as cooking goes, it works great and it disputes the heat evenly. And you could really lower the temperature and simmer and it's also a heater. Sure, it won't heat up the tent like a buddy heater can, but buddy heater is much bigger to travel with and you can't cook with the buddy heater. So if you're solo camping and wanna take the edge off in the cold mornings, this will do just that. And once you're up, you could start cooking with it and it will radiate the heat in the tent as long as you have a good ventilation. Or you could even use it at home. You know, you could place it next to you while gardening to warm yourself. Or like I mentioned earlier, tailgating would be perfect with the tripod setup. And I'm sure a lot of people are gonna come by and ask you what this is. So the hype is true and I'm really liking this stove. But what do you guys think about this two-in-one stove? Uh, leave a comment down below and let me know. But I do wanna mention that it's not meant for backpacking as it does weigh quite a bit for a stove. And when backpacking, every ounce counts. And one other thing that irritated me while I was handling the stove is that <laughs> this grill kept popping off and when I was picking it up. And it's not the easiest to put back together and obviously you're not going to be touching the grill when it's hot but 
even when carrying it with the handle and if you bump it you know it, it'll just do that so I guess as long as you remember not to touch the grill when handling the stove it should be fine but you know it's just a little annoying and that it doesn't come with the built-in igniter but other than that I really don't have any complaints and I like the stove so far and I'm going to use it in my upcoming camping trip and test it out in the real world and I have another fire maple stove review coming up so if you don't want to miss those videos don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new and I'll leave the link to the stove in the video description along with the 10% discount code you guys could use on fire maple on any of their products so make sure to check them out and thank you for sticking around to the end and if this video was informative don't forget to like and do check out my other camping gear reviews or my silent camping videos as well and have a wonderful safe holiday everyone and until next time keep chasing adventures and bye for now